I'm excited to tell you about Ceres because um, I think of Ceres actually as a game changer in the solar system. So we, in many cases we visit classes of objects. We visit asteroids, we visit icy satellites, we visit gas giant planets, we've visited the terrestrial planets time and time again. Um, what's really interesting about Ceres is that Ceres is arguably the only one of its kind. It's the innermost potentially icy body, uh, at least a major body. Um, Ceres was discovered um, in the 1800s actually um, by German astronomers and was originally designated a planet. Um, it was actually so large, it was exactly where we expected it to be from the Titius Bode Law, which is a, an observational law, so people went looking for this missing planet. And what they ended up finding was Ceres. Um, we now know Ceres as the largest asteroid or um, one of the, or the earliest discovered dwarf planet, if you want to think about it that way. Um, but Ceres is a really, really exciting object. And the reason for that is because of what we know and because of what's so surprising about it. So we think about asteroids, we think about dry objects, we think about um, little pieces of rock floating in space, and it turns out that Ceres is not like that at all. So I've got an image here actually showing Ceres alongside the other asteroids uh, that we've visited with spacecraft. Um, and just to give you kind of a, a sense, if Nicole, throw that up. So this is an image of Ceres. Um, and Ceres is that big round one in the middle. Ceres is almost a thousand kilometers across. So if you're thinking about an asteroid, um, you're usually thinking about the things I'm showing to the right-hand side of that image. So if you look there, you've got um, Itakawa, you've got Matilda, you've got these asteroids and Frank that we've vid visited with spacecraft, and that's their actual size, with the exception actually of Itakawa. So Itakawa is this is the kind of the third one on the right hand side kind of little um, bent kind of dusty looking one um, and Itakawa that's actually about five times its actual size that little tiny box that I'm showing right there so that should give you kind of a perspective on why Ceres is so special but if you look at Ceres um, more carefully what you'll notice is that it's also totally a different shape than what you see even with Vesta, even with this giant planet-sized asteroid that um, the size of, As of Arizona, right, that's how big Vesta is, and we saw that it was basically round, it had all of these planetary type um, planetary type processes going on at its surface, but even if you look at Vesta you'll notice that it even doesn't look as round as Ceres, so that's the first real indication that we had from direct imaging that Ceres was so special. Um, we knew other things about Ceres beforehand, but basically it's, it's the combination of this shape, its size, and its total mass that actually tells us that Ceres is incredibly low density, despite being almost a third of the mass of the asteroid belt. What that tells us is that underneath this kind of dusty, dirty, clay-type surface, uh, we think that Ceres might actually be icy. So if you want to think about it, it's a little bit like a Europa or an Enceladus with a dusty layer on the outside. It's the only object that we know of in the whole solar system that's like that. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to just share my excitement about um, getting a, a chance to see another another icy world in the solar system. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm privileged to have been a part of Dawn since I was a grad student. Um, you know, I've, I've worked on, on this project in a lot of different ways, and, and I can't wait to get to Ceres. There were a lot of people that were very compelled by Vesta. Vesta, we have meteorites back from, and, and we hold pieces in our hand, and so, uh, you know, the spectrum, that was one of the first solar system objects that we took spectroscopy of and could actually detect what was on the surface. So Vesta, in many ways, has been kind of the, the low-hanging fruit, but um, I think what we're going to find out is that when we dig a little deeper, Ceres is this special place, too. And uh, I like to say that, you know, when we got to Vesta, we really confirmed things we thought we knew. So it was, it was idea-affirming. And I think when we get to Ceres, it's just going to be absolutely a game-changer, um, a, a new window into the solar system that we wouldn't have without going, going there. So it's just another reason why planetary exploration is so important. It's telling us about ourselves. Um, our history and and it's developing you know new technologies and new um, new understanding new knowledge and if it does nothing else than inspire us to get up in the morning and smile and have a better day then I'm happy and so <laughs> I, you know, I encourage everyone out there who's watching to just just realize all the special you know the special things that planetary exploration does for us and what an awesome time it's going to be when we get to series.